What's up? Welcome back to my channel, the best place for hardworking millennial professionals to bring positive change to your careers. Now, in today's video, I'm going to talk about Mulan. Yeah, it's my channel, so I can talk about whatever I want. But I'm going to stay true to the theme of this channel, which is talking a lot about personality, psychology, sociology, and just analysis of culture and so on. So I'm not going to stray too far away from the core themes of this channel. And I also want to specify that my discussion of this movie is going to generally steer clear of the social justice issues, right? Whether it's Louis Fei's comments about uh, police brutality in Hong Kong, which she pretty much condoned, or you know, the lack of representation on screen, off screen and all that stuff. You know, it's gonna be, I'm gonna touch upon those, but they're not gonna be the main focus of the review of this movie because, you know, the fact of the matter is it's, you know, as a whole, number one, it's a whole can of worms. Number two, it's like, well, I'm just not very attracted to this kind of discourse, right? A quick comment about the movie, I decided to watch a bootleg because I did not want to support Liu Yifei uh, because of her comments about, you know, supporting the Hong Kong police. But at the same time, I am anti-rioting in Hong Kong. So I'm pro-protest, anti-rioting, I'm pro-police enforcing the law, but I'm against police brutality. So it's a very nuanced, in the, more of a centrist position. And that's why I'm comfortable of like, you know, boycotting it, but at the same time watching it. You get what I mean? And also it's Mulan, it's a big Asian thing and I'm Asian clearly and I care about Asian topics. And also wanted my daughter to watch a strong female lead and just watch, you know, some big characters like Jet Li and um, Donnie Yen and Gong Li and you know, all these people, they're pretty big characters. Anyways, without further ado, here are the main points I want to discuss about Mulan. Point number one. Liu Yifei seemed to have missed the memo that this movie is about Huang Mulan and not Xiao Nong Nu. Basically, Lao Yifei, she became famous because of her character as a Xiu Long Lei way back, I think it was like almost 20 years ago. And for those who don't know who Xiu Long Lei is, the translation is literally Little Dragon Girl. And Little Dragon Girl is pretty much the legendary character from Gam Yong, who is pretty much the C.S. Lewis of China, right? When C.S. Lewis was right creating a fantasy world with Tolkien and all of them, with you know the orcs, elves, goblins, and all that stuff, Gam Yong was creating the wuxia mohawk genre in China, right in the 60s, and she's pretty much the most iconic and most popular female character. And so when Lao Yikfei acted that character when she first came out, I think she was like 18 or something when she first came out, it was a huge hit. And the character of Xiu Longlu is pretty much like you know she is as cold as ice, has zero personality, probably the most boring female protagonist that you could possibly have. But at the same time, she's supposed to be the most beautiful, angelic female character ever, right? And so when you have Lao Yikfei, have the personality of Xiu Longlui put into Fa Muklan. It doesn't make sense because Mulan is supposed to be a very interesting character with a lot of personality, a bubbly character, or at least that's what the anchor, the expectation was set in Disney's 1998 release of the cartoon. But if we're talking about personality, the animated version of Mulan is supposed to be this, like following the big five personality traits. Trait openness is supposed to be super high. She's very creative. Trait conscientiousness is quite high because she worked her way through the military and you know she's focused and all that stuff. She did everything she's supposed to do. Extroversion, she is definitely an extrovert. Agreeableness is low because she doesn't mind having conflict with other guys in the army, right? And she stands up for herself and she's able to hold up her end. Trait neuroticism is low because you know she does get flustered once in a while during the movie, but it's not that big of a deal. She recovers and she bounces back. But if you look at Liu Yifei's version of Mulan, trait openness was medium. She wasn't exactly highly creative throughout the whole movie. There wasn't anything that, when I saw it, there wasn't anything that suggested to me that she was creative, open-minded, or no, nor was she exactly closed-minded, but the fact that she was willing, so willing to go with her father's, you know, you know your role kind of thing, it kind of showed that, yeah, trait openness was lower than the one that in the animated version. If you look at trait conscientiousness, you don't see that grit, you don't see that determination that really set apart the animated version of Mulan. This live version of Mulan, it seemed very much like, yeah, she was going through the military stuff and you know, it, she didn't show too much grit. Extroversion, she came across as almost a borderline introvert, right? Am ambivert because she was, you know, she's active and she has a high activity mode. But at the same time, she came across as quite introverted because, well, number one, she didn't really banter with the guys, right? And the only banter that you actually got was that one meal scene that 
she had with the guys. So I wouldn't say that she was particularly extroverted as well. Agreeableness, she was medium low. She was nicer in the live action as opposed to the animated version. And trait neuroticism, I'll also say she's in the middle as well. So pretty much like she seemed a lot more stressed throughout everything than the animated version, right? And basically this is a breakdown of her big five personality traits. And if you are to look, really look at the contrast, the Mulan in the animated version pretty much has the perfect personality for a leader, right? High openness, high conscientiousness, high extroversion, low agreeableness, and low neuroticism. That is the traditional leadership profile. And she had all that. Now, if you look at Lao Yik Fei's version, what you find is pretty much everything in the middle. And in that case, she's more of a traditional facilitator, negotiator, one of the people who balance things and they're the nice person, but they can also be kind of mean, but there's the personality is quite flat, to be honest. And so, yeah, that's my quick breakdown of her personality. If you want to know about your personality, you can take a free personality test, which I'll include in the links below. But of course, a heads up, this is for my career coaching business. And so if you take that free personality test, you'll get some emails from me about career coaching. And so feel free to unsub if you want. It's not a big deal to me. It's free anyways. But if you're curious about it, go take a free big five personality traits test. It's on me. I also understand personality plays a role in terms of language, because when you look at Lao Yik Fei, right? She's obviously not a native English speaker. If you look at Gong Lei, she isn't exactly a native English speaker either. And then you look at Donnie Yen, clearly not an English speaker, and Jet Li, not an English speaker, right? All these characters are not native English speakers. And when you have someone speaking in another language, you know, the personality changes, right? So, and you know, for Cantonese and English, I'm more I'm more fluent with it, but you just express yourself quite differently when you speak a different language. And anybody who speaks multiple languages out there, you totally understand that. And of course, the more fluent you are, the more you're able to express yourself. But if you look at those actors, none of them are actually native speakers. So everything becomes you know, very scripted and regimented. And at the same time, they're really not able to fully express their personality, right? And that's why, perhaps, that's why Liu Yifei's personality was just a flat line, while the animated version is much more active, much more interesting. And by merit of it being animated, you can play on exaggerations, right? Because that's exactly the whole point of cartoons. And so that brings me to my second point is that everyone kind of had a persona to fit, but there were no other dimensions of their personality that was able to be displayed. So if you look at Donnie Yen, right? He was a general and pretty much the general's personality was stern all the way through. And you know, there were one or two gentle points, but that's about it. If you look at the dad, right? The dad was worried all the time. That was basically his persona, only show the worried side. And then the mom was obviously the low soul side, right? The fussy mom. And pretty much she was fussy throughout the whole movie from the begin, like at the beginning and at the end. That was the only dimension she was able to show about herself. Jet Li as the emperor, same thing. It was pretty much like, I'm gonna take him down. We're gonna fight a boar, blah, 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 right? It's, it's, it was pretty much one dimensional. And so that's another major factor is that, and Gong Li, she was pretty much like, distressed and sad about her past and her present and her future and she's just sad period and that just came across as well and Liu Yifei was you know pretty much you know a flat line throughout the whole performance as well you felt like everyone was acting a different persona different role a different caricature of a person but the depth wasn't there and they were just kind of limited to their role now another major complaint I have about this version of live action Mulan is the whole chi crap right like what the heck is chi if you're gonna say like Loi Gong Nei Gong, right? Then, like, I understand, like, you know, she practiced martial arts and she got, like, this crazy Nei Gong going for her. You see all of that in, like, animated mohap stuff, right? It's pretty much like, yeah, I can do a palm and then bam, it hits, like, 100 meters out. I get that. But in this case, it was like, she has this innate chi thing going for her that it's kind of her special Disney princess power, which she basically did nothing for and she has a superpower and that separates her from everyone else. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of Mulan. 
Mulan is about a story of a girl who was able to overcome odds and stand equal with the guys because she put the work in, she has the grit, and she stood out because of who she is and the effort that she put into being who she is, right? And also taking that risk, taking that jump, and just pushing her limits. But in this case, like I said before, she didn't really show too much of that grit. And also, she has this super innate power that justifies her superpower of kicking butt, right? And I don't think that's really helpful as a message. So I'm showing this to my daughter, and it's like, what am I supposed to tell her? You either have it or you don't. Or should I tell her, you put the work in, you can stand equal to the guys, right? And that's kind of the message you want to give the kids, but at the same time, with your super innate chi power, right? It's like, yo, either you have it or you don't. And there's nothing you can do about it, right? And so it goes into that whole growth mindset thing, right? By actually taking away her superpower, you actually give her that personality, that depth of a character, rather than just some person born with chi who can like take out people and stuff, right? Or turn into an eagle in the case of Gonglei. The third major complaint I have about Mulan is that growing up, I watched Once Upon a Time in China with Jet Li and I was a huge fan of him like dun, 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 dun. Like, you know, like we, that is like, my friend Colin McGuire wrote a paper saying how that Once Upon a Time in China theme by Lam Zicheng is pretty much the Chinese anthem for martial arts or the Chinese overseas and transnational anthem for their identity. It's an iconic song. However, in this movie, I honestly had to look at the credits to know who Jet Li was. And if you're going to have Jet Li as the emperor, the only actual action scene that he had was like, you know, the, the cloth pulling moment where like, you know, he pulled some cloth and he did a pose or two, right? And I understand that Jet Li is having some health issues and he can't really do what he used to do, but at least make him look like Jet Li. He didn't even look like Jet Li. Like maybe it's the facial hair, but that's just me, right? Me being a huge Jet Li fan, I'm just kind of disappointed that they didn't make him a bigger feature other than like the few Emperor scenes that he had. The fourth beef that I have with Mulan is that it was seriously confusing. Everyone had a different accent. English accent, right? Everyone had a different Chinese English accent. And it was and it's like, okay, Liu Yi face, she has her own uh, you know, mainland English accent. And then you have Donnie Yen with his Hong Kong Chinese accent. And then you have Gong Lei with her accent. I don't know what it is. Then you have Jet Li who has a Chinese accent with a lot more years of experience under it than Lao Yik Fei. And so it pretty much like threw me off. And then you have some people who were speaking like perfect American English, and then you have some people who are speaking like fake Chinese accent English and and it's just kind of it just kind of felt weird it didn't work it didn't mesh because geographically if you're in the same town if you're speaking English at least like have the same English accent but maybe that's asking too much another thing was that it was filmed in Northwest China and it's pretty much where the Uyghurs lived and I don't know if you follow the news or not but China's under a lot of heat right now with the Uyghurs being imprisoned and going through re-education and all sorts of programs. I don't know the details of it but one thing I could say is that the Uyghur representation for the northwest part of China was minimal. You felt it was just Han Chinese and if you look at how the signification of China is going, right? Which is basically the Han Chinese going to other regions and essentially uh, wiping out their language, wiping out their local culture and replacing it with Han Chinese either through migration or re-education. You see that in the movie as well. There's something to be said about Disney releasing this movie being somewhat tone deaf to the fact that the Uyghurs are imprisoned right now. I'm not the only one talking about this. A lot of people are talking about it as well. I'm not gonna make this an emphasis here, but I think there's something to be said about the lack of Uyghur representation and pretty much the Han being the dominant representation. And my last point is talking about the lack of representation. And I'm not a huge fan of including people for the sake of including people and having quotas for Asians and movies and so on. Like if you can do a great job, awesome, especially if it's off screen. But what clearly shows is that the direction for the filming off screen totally neutered any personality or any cultural expression on in terms of the people on screen. So, or maybe it's Lao Yikfei's lack of acting skill, or maybe it's the off screen cast who are projecting their visions of an oriental Chinese thing and then creating a bastardization of a Disney movie of Western projection on Eastern 
culture and then trying to appease the Chinese market but not making it Chinese enough. And they start reciting platitudes like honor, courage, the honesty, dignity, truth, zan, right? And then there's also at the end, they brought in the idea of how, xiao, or hyo, right? If you're Korean. Another thing I couldn't take was they translated how as devotion to family when there's an actual perfectly fine term for it called filial piety. But I guess that's asking too much for a lay audience as well. Uh, filial piety is basically, um, you know, how, right? So with all that being said, my conclusion is that it's just not a good movie. Lao Yifei couldn't deliver. It was a bastardization of the East and West. It was confusing in terms of the geography, in terms of the language. The personality that was expected and the personality that we were given was not consistent. People were one dimensional. They were reciting platitudes and any depth was pretty much washed out in whatever process that was done in the making of this movie. The whole Chi superpower crap needs to go because that takes away any credit on the part of Mulan. The big feature characters like Gong Lei, Lei Ling, Yan Zidan, they didn't have their time to shine. And all the side characters in the army, they were kind of interesting, but you know, they didn't really hit the spot. And so in this video, I think I steered pretty clear of the social justice issues, right? I addressed it at the get-go, police brutality, no, no. Uh, protesting is okay, rioting, no, no, and enforcing when there's rioting is okay, right? But Lao Yikfei's position was pretty much like, you know, go Hong Kong police, beat them up, right? And that's a huge no-no for me. But at the same time, I think I gave a pretty honest take on her acting, which is, there's not much. The social justice issue of the lack of representation, if you're able to deliver the goods without the representation and without input, that's fine. Like, I honestly don't think having an ABC chime in on Mulan is going to help. Because from my experience, dealing with a lot of ABCs or CBCs or whatever BCs, right? Uh, which is basically whatever born Chinese, right? American born Chinese, Chinese, Canadian born Chinese, and so on. Um, uh, they don't understand Chinese culture that well either. Like, they go to restaurants and like order guan cao o ho, and that's probably the limit of their Chinese. And so you need real people who can bridge the culture to do that. And they're, and they're really like rare. Right, and there a lot of them are not in the film industry either. So, like, I don't think finding representation is actually going to help too much, unless you really find that rare talent who can actually bridge the stuff. And also, there's that huge bamboo ceiling, right? If you bring an Asian into an American team, and that Asian is like a kind of like a cultural in between, or someone that's like you know just purely from China or purely from the East, what's going to happen is that they're not going to be able to communicate very well with the American team because, and being a Chinese person who was raised in my family and taught to be humble, meek, and quiet and speak up when it really matters. And you work with a bunch of Americans who love to talk anyways. Leadership in America is perceived to be like, no, talk and being extroverted. But leadership in China is perceived to be introverted, right? Anyways, I don't think bringing over some random person from China is going to help either because they'll just get walked over by the American agenda. If you bring an ABC, they probably won't have a very good grasp of Chinese culture to be very honest. So yeah, it's just kind of the way it is. If you really want to watch a good Mulan, go watch the old cartoon. The cartoon version was excellent. Mushu made it awesome. I totally miss Mushu in this one and that 3D Phoenix flying in the air didn't help because if you're gonna bring in supernatural elements anyways, then why not Mushu? Yeah, so if you wanna watch a Mulan, go check out the old cartoon version. I think that's totally cool. If you want a, like a Chinese version, which was actually, the, the Cantonese version is actually pretty solid. The one that's uh, dubbed by Kelly Chan, right? Tamai Lam. She did a pretty good job. And then Gong Man Fai who did Mok Soi was like totally hilarious. So I would actually recommend you to check out, just, just switch the language and you're going to be much better. Um, I actually had more of a kick reading the Chinese subtitles of the bootleg version than actually enjoying the movie itself. They had like Zhao Yuan Fat at the bottom. They had some other funny stuff that they fed into subtitles that's, you know, just to troll the movie. That stuff was actually more entertaining than the movie itself. And there's also another uh, version that came out in 2009 that came out by Zumei, right? And that was a pretty good version as well. There are some alternatives for Mulan out there, but this version just generally wasn't very good. And that's it. That's my review of Mulan. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and leave a comment to let me know you like this content so that I know to make more because I don't know not everyone likes to listen to me talking about career all the time I can talk about other stuff right so yeah see you around